Hey there, crypto miner. Oh, me? No, the other guy with the pocket protector. Uh. Yes, you. Are you looking for a reliable multi pool that automatically mines the most profitable altcoin, converts them to your favorite supernet coin, and sends them straight to your wallet? Well, I, I don't. I, I... Well, look no further. Head on over to altnuts.com today. Got all your old favorites like X11, oh, yeah. Scripts, SHA256. <coughs> Ready to turn your hash into cash. Currently paying out tasty Supernet flavors like Opal Coin, Bitcoin Dark, VPN Coin, and Veracoin. Stop by the Supernet Multi Pool today at www.altnuts.com. This is Supernet Radio. Live, live at supernetradio.com. This is Supernet Radio, live at supernetradio.com. Good morning, good morning, Crypto Land. Yes, I know it's afternoon, but it is morning for me at the moment. Good morning, good morning, Crypto Land. So, uh, yes, I know it's afternoon, afternoon, but it is morning for me at the moment. Good morning, good morning, Crypto We have uh, so, uh, yes, I know our core dev from NXT, NXT at the moment. Good morning, good morning. here with we us today. Uh, so, uh, yes, I know our core dev, dev from NXT, NXT. One minute. Good morning, good morning. we're getting a little bit of echo. Our core dev from NXT, one minute. we're getting a little bit of echo. Our core dev from NXT, one minute. we're getting a little bit of echo. Our core dev from NXT, we're gonna have to work on this later. Later today, me and Prince. Uh, we're gonna have to work on this later. Later today, me and Prince. Uh, let me see. We're gonna have to work on this later. Later today, me and Prince. Let me see. We're gonna have to work Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. I know Lyaf is here with us. He's waiting patiently. Bear with me, Lyaf. You hear what us laugh? Hey, live, say hello for the for the crowd. All right. Do do you uh did you turn all your audio off in the background? Supernet radio. Yeah, I could I could hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, problem is the crowd doesn't hear you. So give me one second here. All right. Say it one more time. Getting you. Uh, oh, I know why. I got it. I got it. Okay, now. Hello, one, two, three. Hello, hey. one, two, three. All right. You're a sexy guy, Laugh. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, guys. So we're here live with Lyaf. Uh, thank you for coming on the show, Lyaf. Right. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure being on Supernet Radio. I, I have I have a real love for NXT. Yeah, yeah I, I guess we all do. <laughs> I I personally believe it's better than Bitcoin. A lot of I... people will, will get angry that I said that. Do you, do you do you believe NXT is better than Bitcoin? Fyaf, you still with me? Hmm. I seem to have lost you, Fyaf. Not sure why. I apologize, people. I had a death in the family yesterday. I almost slept through the show. Oh, give me two seconds. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cancel it, though, because I was very excited. This was one of my favorite shows. Uh, I could hear me, and I don't know what happened to Laif. Laif? Yes, uh, I'm with uh, you. There we go. There we go. Okay, good. My my computer just decided to no longer recognize my my connection. All right, and that's Windows because we we know Windows does stupid things like that. Okay. All right. So uh, you're on live. Uh, so how how many people are on your team besides you, Laya? I mean, the the in, in the NXT development team. It's yeah. it's a very fluid question. Uh, I, I think I think in total, uh, normally over time we have something like three, four contributors at every given time, yeah. and and also you know people that come for specific uh, task, help a little a little, then go away and come back. So sometimes we get some contributions away, uh, from uh, some, sometimes from later, people outside the development team and we integrate from, them uh, into it. From people outside uh, the development team and we but, integrate them uh, into it. Uh, but generally it's a, it's a very small team. So. Oh, for a small team, you guys accomplished a lot. I mean, how did you accomplish so much with such a small team? Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to testify, you know. Are you, are you guys that, that good? Um, first of all, um, we, we have uh, Jean-Luc, who is, uh, you know, who is, uh, let's call it the devel development lead. And he's uh, all over the place on the server side, and uh, we have a very talented uh, client-side developer, Holger. And uh, I, I'm trying to help here and there. Jean Luc um, Picard, the guy from Star Trek. Yes. Is that, he, is, that, is, he, that, is that his favorite character? Is that why he named him? He named him Jean Luc. I I I, I guess. <laughs> um, um, I, I'm sure. I mean, I I can't imagine that your <laughs> real name is Jean Luc Picard. So <laughs> maybe he really is Jean Luc Picard. Yeah. So um, so so yeah. I I would say three four uh, core contributors, and here and there we get help from friends. Uh, we we get a lot of help from the community in testing, in documentation. You know, right. updating the wiki, but I'm not counting these as core developers. So, I see. Um, so, so uh, NXT has been doing really well lately. I mean, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, 
it sort of uh, sort of, it went down a bit, but now it seems to be coming back up little by little. Uh, you, you know, I, I I prefer not uh, not to look. It's really price, right? Yeah, it, it's you know the short short term fluctuations are really not important. As as long as we keep the technology uh, ahead, um, and we continue to develop, and we have uh, and uh, and and the the. A protocol is stable and usable and we have businesses and users uh, that are uh, implementing third-party applications that's much more important than the uh, price fluctu fluctuations oh wow uh, yes it's, it's, it's true it's you know it's definitely means nothing at the end because there's so many investors that pump and dump and the very it's still like the wild west in there uh, but, yeah, you, but compared to compared to what ethereum's doing i think you guys are are, are way ahead of what's going on uh, it's, in, it, it's really difficult to compare nxt to ethereum uh, because you know nxt is already running for a year and a half right and and, and it is quite uh, proven technology nowadays um, I mean we are not trying to solve every problem in the world at the same time um, sorry about that Lutz can we stop for just a second sure I'm sorry all right can you pause it for a second sure uh, I have to take this okay you are on mute uh, hello I Hi, welcome back. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. You hear me? Was that was that a fan calling? Uh, yes. I hear you uh, on the radio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that that was something I had to answer. If my <laughs> um, yeah, go, go ahead. Let's so, continue. So, uh, so the new wallet is uh, one point five point nine, right? Uh, no, 1.5.10 already, 10, and probably right? 11 is coming up in a couple of days, maybe less. Oh wow! What, what, what are the changes? What are the changes? Um, in between 10, 9 and 10, we um, we improved the database performance, and we also introduced the Windows installer. Um, um, broke a few things on the way but um, people are uh, are upgrading upgrading and in 11 we are also going to fix a few problems that we found uh, remove code that was specific to the hard fork block right. uh, we, we are constantly monitoring the the network especially now when we when we have such a big uh, release coming up so it's we're constantly looking at log files and trying to help users upgrade uh, and so on nice no, it, it, it shows it shows that you guys are constantly working it, it shows that uh, there's a, a team behind the the coin that's actually working of course i mean I, it's a lot it, of it, a lot of debugging right it's a 24/7 uh, job. I mean, <laughs> because you know this this uh, protocol, this network never sleeps. It's <laughs> um, it has to be 24/7 uh, up and running. Oh, well, yeah, it does. Uh, it's you know, especially for you know people to have confidence in it. You know, they have to see that there's a team behind it. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk about a little bit about in what's in the wallet. Uh, right. you, you have a new voting system. Yeah. Uh, in one point five point nine, could could you tell us about the new features of the af after the fork? Yes. Okay. So so let's start with the uh, uh, major features. 
first is a, a completely decentralized voting system, which as far as I can tell, I mean, I haven't seen something like this actually live in a decentralized crypto uh, protocol. Um, wh what it does is uh, um, users can uh, create polls that and define the parameters for voting. Um, they uh, create, after defining the parameters, you also set the height at which the poll is going to be counted. And um, you can set several voting models. I'll talk about this uh, a bit later and submit the poll. Users can then see the polls on the uh, on the dashboard, on, on the wallet. I mean, if you look at the voting system, you now you can see that we now have like something like eight uh, coins, that uh, eight votes that people submitted. Um, for example, are you in agree that Jean-Luc is a tyrant? That's one of them, or is unicorn equals communist threat? So, so people uh, submit uh, polls about um, subjects that they are interested about, and other users can vote according to the voting parameters set by the issuer of the poll. Okay, um, there are there are several voting models. Um, you can vote, the most basic voting model is by, um, is simply each account, one account, one vote. Um, it's not a good vote, a very good voting model because uh, people that are interested in, uh, in affecting the poll can create new accounts just for uh, voting in the, uh, in the poll. So it's not a very fair uh, model. Um, um, model number two is uh, by um, uh, by balance, which is uh, your voting power is that is uh, related to your uh, NXT balance. Um, two two other voting models are by um, asset and by currency. Where, um, where your asset balance or your currency balance is what gives you the, your voting power. So, so let's say if I have um, 1,000 uh, Supernet uh, assets, I can, my vote is counted as 1,000 votes. While if, if someone has only one asset, they are counted as one vote. All right. We should be back on. My apologies. Uh, we're finding out. You were talking about the voting system. <laughs> my, my apologies for that. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just asking. Let's see here. I, I think they I think they heard up to the part of the voting system. Okay, let's see if at least we finish the voting system. Around voting, depending on how much balance you are. Oh boy. Okay, are we are we live? Yes, we're live now. Okay. Um, okay, so voting. So we talked about voting by balance. Last time we heard, um, or right, let me organize my thoughts. So, um, so we talked about the voting models. Uh, so we have voting model by account by. Uh, so so we have voting model by account, one vote per account by balance, according to your NXT balance. That's your voting power according uh, to um, assets I mean you for a specific asset the more you uh, the more the higher quantity of the asset you have you have more voting power 
or a per currency where the higher number of units um, um, w when the higher number of currency units gives you higher uh, voting power um, so you can also define a mean balance which means that only uh, accounts that has enough balance of uh, NXT or asset or currency can uh, participate in the voting um, you can mix and match so you can say that voting is by NXT balance but uh, in order to vote you need to have at least 100 uh, super net assets um, and so you can combine things together um, I see you see, right. So, so now, uh, what else I, I wanted to say about voting? Um, okay, one thing important to note is that the votes are counted at the finish height of the poll. So I can have million next now when I vote, and only one hundred next when the poll finishes at the height the poll finishes. So my voting power is just 100, not 1 million. Okay, so counting is, do is done at the end of the poll. Um, anything else I need to cover? Let's see. That, that, that height thing always confuses me, you know, when, when I disperse assets. Okay. You know, you know when, when I have to issue assets, the, it asks for the height. Yes. That. So, so the, the, but the, you know, the height is a way to tell when when something ends. So, height is important uh -huh. um, be, because, especially for a poll, you have to set, uh, you know, some limits that people. You have to give people time to understand the poll, uh, what it means, and to decide what their uh, opinion is. I mean, for example, if you look at the client now we have um, optimal optimal NXT minimum fee for example it's a very important uh, poll and you need to decide what's your opinion so we tell you that you still have 6,594 blocks to decide about uh, your opinion okay so gotcha. um, let's move to the next um, phasing big big feature uh, phasing and it's it's kind of second time I'm <laughs> giving this so let's hope now it will be I, I, uh, I, we'll, I think I'll understand we'll, it better the second time around yeah uh, may, maybe it will come up better <laughs> uh, it was, it was next, a little confusing it, next time so so phasing is about the ability to execute delayed for delayed execution of transactions say for example when you submit a new transaction you submit it to the network, it's unconfirmed. Later, it, uh, a forger forges the next block, then right. your transaction is executed. Right. That's how it used to be until version 1.5. In version 1.5, you have another option. You can tell that the transaction is phased and it has a finish height, which is later than the current block height, which means that you submit the transaction now, a forger forges a block, your transaction is included in this block, but it's not executed yet. It's only executed at the finish height that you specified uh, when you submitted the phase transaction. Okay. Now, um, but but then between the time you s the transaction is included and until the time it's uh, in, until its finish height. Other accounts has the chance to vote about this transaction, and there are quite a few voting models. The first is trivial; it's no voting. You mean you trans you submitted the transaction? You said what the finish height? It will execute it on the finish height. If it's valid, it will be uh, executed. If it's not valid, it's not going to affect anything, but it's going to be executed. Then um, you can have the um, the three uh, the, the four voting models that I talked about before. Right. Um, 
with regular voting by account, by uh, balance, by currency and by asset. In addition, you can specify a white list of, of accounts that are allowed to vote on your transactions. So, for example, I want to, um, I want to, uh, to pay you, you lose uh, 1000 NXT, 100 blocks from now, but only if the authorization account of SuperNet approves the transaction. So I set the white list to, um, to the specific account that I want to, to approve the transaction. I can set the by account voting model because it's just I need one account to approve. And then 100, uh, 100 blocks from now, the protocol checks. If we got a, an approved transaction, a, a transaction from the specific account that authorized the transaction, then this transaction is going to be executed and the 1,000 votes uh, are going, 1,000 NXT are going to be sent to your account. If not, then this um, transaction will not get executed. Uh, every effect it has will be undone and it was it will still be included in the blockchain but it will not be executed it's something important to understand okay but um, it but it goes uh, it goes more more than that we can use phasing in more sophisticated ways for example we can use it to implement atomic transaction which is something that couldn't be done in NXT before. Because let's say that I want to swap uh, assets between us. Uh, I, I have 100 gene assets, you have 200 supernet assets. We want to swap it. We, uh, we know each other, so there is no problem. We just schedule the transaction. We uh, count one, two, three, submit the transaction. It's included in the next block. And, and every, everybody is happy. But what if I want to cheat you? I can do a lot of manipulations with transactions as long as they are unconfirmed. I, um, I, I can, if I'm the forger, I can decide not to include my transaction, but mm -hmm. to include your transaction. And before my transaction gets a chance to get included in the next block, I already move the assets to another uh, account. So now my transaction won't get executed, but yours will be executed. That's not atomic. Okay, that's naive. That's a naive swap that we are doing nowadays. With uh, with atomic transactions, we can actually make the protocol enforce that either both transactions are executed at a certain block height, or they are both excluded. Okay, so this gives a place for very interesting applications. Um, and for example, you know trading asset for asset, assets for currency, currency for alias, and so on and so on. And, uh, and other also uh, issues like um, escrows, uh, perhaps uh, uh, so, some kinds of, uh, a, a lot of um, uh, applications that requires trust between two parties now become trustless. Okay. We don't have this feature, this sophisticated feature in the UI yet, but I can definitely imagine uh, developers uh, using the API uh, to use it. We call it voting by transaction. And, um, okay. and I can definitely see someone developing a plugin to support this in case we, we will probably get to the UI of this feature uh, sometime. Okay, another, another very important voting model is um, vote on, um, is, it's called a approve on reveal secret, okay? Which means that when you submit your phase transaction, uh, uh, which means someone has a secret. A secret could be a passphrase, a hash of a file, a file with a digital signature, uh, just... Right hello world text or you hash it you you get the sha256 hash of this uh, token or secret send it to me and and i uh, submit a phase transaction uh, by hash 
אוקיי, okay, specifying the hash. I don't know the secret, I only know the hash. So right. in order for my transaction to get approved and executed at the finish height, I need you to reveal the secret, okay? Ah. So you need to send an approved transaction where one of the parameters to the approved transaction is your secret. Okay, so, and so the secret is, is like the key. So the secret is the key to unlocking this transaction. Yeah, yes. you, you can look at this this way. Um, it's simpler to just to explain the second time. So maybe we should do this more often. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand it. I, I understand it a lot better now. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, I explained it better this time. So, <laughs> um, so, so okay. So, so one thing to understand that when you submit a phase transaction, someone else, possibly even you, need to uh, submit an approved transaction, possibly multiple approved transactions, depend on the sophisticated conditions that you can define when you submit the phase transaction. Okay. Exactly. So, so it's. It's quite complex feature, and one more thing to understand is that the phase transaction need to pass validation twice. Once when they are once at the block where they are included, and again at the block where they are ex- executed. So, for example, let's say I would like to register an alias 100 blocks from now. First of all, the protocol checks that the alias is not registered now. So it includes it in the next block, but it doesn't register the alias yet. 100 blocks from now, the protocol checks again that it, this alias is not registered. If it is registered already, someone 50 blocks from now squatted this alias, so my alias will not get registered. So it's important to understand that the fact that phase transactions are included in the blockchain does not mean that they will ever get executed. If at the finish height they are not valid, they are not going to be executed, every side effect of this transaction will be undone. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it, it'll, it'll, it'll just, it'll be like it never, it never happened. Uh, yes. So if we locked some uh, amount, it will get unlocked. Um, and things like that. Um, it's, it. I, I expect this to be uh, this feature to be mostly too complex for for most day-to-day users, but it is very important for advanced applications. So right. Uh, Eventually, other developers will take advantage of it. Yeah, it will take it will take time until uh, people will understand how to exploit it. Not exploit it. How to utilize it <laughs> um, on on the uh, on the other hand, um, going back to the voting system, I I can see how voting can be very uh, appealing to some uh, to some organizations, companies, individuals. Uh, but the main barrier, as always, would be uh, that users will have to pay fees. In NXT, like uh, same problem we have with currencies and DGS and, and and so on. So it all depends on the utility of. Uh, hopefully, the utility of voting will bring more uh, users to the to the NXT uh, blockchain itself, and this will create a, a feedback loop that the more users know about NXT, the more users can use advanced advanced features and, and so on so right. so so that's the hope and uh, I, I at least um, phasing can be somewhat compared with Bitcoin multi-signature but it's it's much more capable it's almost like uh, it gives you some of the power of smart contracts but without programming uh, it doesn't require to do anything almost anything outside of the protocol, like uh, signing bytes and things like that. It's right. only required for the most advanced uses, uses of phasing. Right, and it's, it's safer, it's always safer done within the protocol. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and even for the things that needs to be done outside of the protocol, I'm sure that uh, third-party developers will, 
will create applications that will simplify these uh, processes. And when, when you say the protocol, is there a name for the protocol? Like, no, like I, I mean, TCP when IP? I say, no, when I say protocol, I mean, I mean the rules that govern the NXT blockchain. Right, which is which is a protocol. Uh, I, I just let, want let, want people to understand. Yeah, a, a uh, better, what a protocol. Uh, is. Maybe instead of the protocol, we can say the blockchain. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so everything's the, done uh, within the blockchain. The, I, I would say we can use it as a synonym. I'm not sure why I'm saying protocol all the time. So, um, so if the um, so most of the things are done on the blockchain. Not or not outside. In some, uh, for example, for atomic transactions, you will need to do uh, some operations um, outside of the blockchain. Okay, you know, you know, we have the ability to submit a transaction, but just get the bytes back, not really submit it to the blockchain, and then take these bytes and sign them. Let, let's not get into this. All right. If if it's interesting for someone, we'll we'll have the documentation available. You is, can always where is, is there documentation available? Um, or you still have to so, make it? some kind. Uh, th there is some documentation. If if you really need something and don't understand how to uh, implement it, uh, I I would start with uh, posting question in the forum and. And work your way from there. How about here on Supernet Slack? Um, Can they contact you here? It, sometimes it's it, easier yeah. with a conversation instead of posting constantly. I I I, I like the the forum uh, structure better because it uh, it creates it. Uh, maybe because I'm not used to Slack, but. Um, it's easier to get back to something uh, a month later, in my view. But maybe it's just because I don't, I'm not used to Slack. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, we we have a lot a lot of uh, technical people here, so don't underestimate them. There's definitely no, no. there's tons yeah. like Jones and we, there's tons of people here that that know what you're talking about. Generally, I I, I less like the, the the structure of chat because of the, its interruptive. Uh, uh, nature, the interrupt nature. I like to, you know, code, code, code. When I'm tired of coding, I like to review what people think. What's uh, new in the forum? Right. With chat, you you easily lose track of what's going on unless you are constantly monitoring. At least that's my uh, impression. Okay. Uh, but you, I I I thought the same way. But but now that ever since I started with the Slack, and I'm not. And I'm not just in one Slack. I'm in many Slacks. Blocknet. I'm in. I'm in all of them. And uh, all right. You know, okay. so in, it, it's kind of like being on multiple forums. It, it's it's actually pretty cool. You get used to it after a while. Okay. I'm I'm willing. I'm open to try. Um, okay. Let Let's talk. We have a lot more to cover. So so let's talk about prunable messages. Prunable messages. Yeah. Okay. Prunable messages is another very innovative feature. I have no idea if anyone else ever implemented it in uh, in uh, crypto. The idea is that in in uh, next we allow for messages. Uh, messages could be up to 1,000 bytes, but after you send the messages, let's say that the message uh, notifies you that you won uh, 2.5 next in a lottery. Okay, and this message takes 300 bytes. I mean, why do we need to keep this thing <laughs> now and replicate it over all the network all the time? And whenever a new user downloads the blockchain, they need to get this message transaction. This, trans this message transaction is only important for the sender and the recipient. Right. Uh, so. But w but right now it's in the blockchain, so it it bloats the blockchain. Nobody really needs it uh, anymore after it was submitted and read. I see. So, so I, I've seen I've seen that option where not now you could you could uh, uh, choose to keep it on the blockchain or yeah. or not. Uh, okay. Now what what happens is that by default every message that you send, regardless if it's in, encrypted or not, 
is going to be deleted uh, after two weeks, exactly. Two weeks. So, yeah, w what will be left is a hash of the message, okay? Hash is, um, so, so the hash of the message, the 32 bytes uh, SHA-256 hash is left uh, to prove that the message existed. So if the message is less than 32 bytes, it will stay. If it's longer than 32 bytes, it will be pruned, and, the, and only the hash will be left. Um, you can also say that you want your message to be permanent. In the, in the UI, it says the message is never deleted, OK? In this right. case, we, we respect your will, and the message will never get deleted. However, you will have to pay more fee. You'll have to pay fee proportional to uh, to the bytes that you are uh, uh, allocating for this message and uh, bloating the blockchain with it. And for um, the the permanent messages, messages that are never deleted are are still limited to 1,000 bytes. But it's possible that in the future we'll further uh, limit it. However, the prunable messages are now allowed to be up to 42k inside, in size. Okay, see, right. 42k, it's quite substantial. Right, for so, words, that, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, so it means you can include a PDF or um, something uh, very, you know, the Satoshi uh, PDF on Bitcoin. Right. Uh, or, or something uh, in this size. Uh, assuming that you optimize it a little bit, you can integrate maybe. Right, that, that could be anywhere or, like four or five thousand words, more or less. Yep. Sounds right. Yep. Um, okay. So, so these are prunable messages. So, it's important to understand that by default now messages are prunable. Okay. So don't. So don't be surprised if your message has been deleted two weeks from now, okay? Unless so, unless you specify that it's not prunable, it will be pruned. Nice. Okay. I, I like that. I like that feature. I, I, I hate I hate the fact that the old messages were always there. Yeah. That, that's that was that's a great idea. Okay. So now um, on top of this infrastructure, um, we built mostly John look but let's say we built a, another feature we call tag data tag data is sort of like a message but it's more like a broadcast it's a message that's available to anyone okay um, so the idea is that you can now upload upload files up to 42 K in size um, so, uh, and these files will stay uh, for two weeks in the protocol, and then it will be deleted unless someone asks, submits another transaction that instead of upload, it submits an extend transaction, okay? You submit extend transaction, you say which uploaded data you want to um, to extend, and then you get another two weeks from the time you chose to extend the data. So it means that popular data that people are willing to pay the fee in order to keep in the blockchain can can stay alive in the blockchain more than two weeks. Okay. Okay. Right. The, the non-important data will be deleted after two weeks, but the important data that users care about, they can always keep it in the blockchain. Okay. Right. Furthermore, you can search the tag data by quite a few uh, criteria, and it's especially designed uh, uh, in favor of uploading content uh, in a form of a file. Although you can just upload data, but you can also upload the file. Um, are we? Right. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're you're okay. So, so uh, you could. could okay, so you, it's basically like publicizing a message. Uh, yes. 
but 42k allows you to do some interesting uh, things. Um, so, so this is so we have prunable messages and we have tag data, which is kind of the same thing, but tag data is public to anyone and it's easily searchable from within the UI. I'm not sure we have UI for this yet for searching, but we surely would have a plugin soon if it's not already available. Gotcha. Um, okay, now. Um, Okay, integrate and install. I think that w one of the uh, uh, barriers of, of Next for main adapt, uh, adaption by, you know, the average Joe is, uh, is because we distribute our distribution as a zip file. And, you know, 90% of the world population does not know how to open a zip file, okay? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, so... So, so this is uh, is a real problem, and we now uh, distribute. It's actually starting with one five ten. We actually distribute an, an executable um, um, installer with a nice UI dialogue. So, ask you, you know, show you the license agreement, the change log, ask you where you want to install. Uh, by default installs to program files, mm -hmm. allows you to run without administrator privileges on Windows, which is very, very important. And I think most importantly, this uh, executable is digitally signed by, um, by a dig digital signature that the NXT Foundation was able to get for us. Um, so it looks very, it's a very legitimate. You no longer need to check the SHA-256, uh, uh, check the, the, you know, the public key, things like that. The right. Windows checks it for you, like it does when you install something from Oracle or Microsoft or IBM or right, like Google. MSI. Okay, it gives you a lot of credibility to distribute a, an executable which is digitally signed. You don't get a nasty warning that uh, you don't get download the uh, warning from Chrome <laughs> and things, yeah. some funny things, the antivirus that does not like uh, the zip file. And, right, or, because or, or, executables are, are, are not trusted in general. Yeah, so, so now we have an executable which is actually trusted because it's signed using a digital signature, it was actually, it took a lot of time to, you know, to, to piece this puzzle and get to a state where we can actually uh, provide something like this. You know, we had to, a lot of coordination and experimentation and so on. Uh, in, together with the installer, we now have, um, you can now, instead of running run.bat, I mean, who, who runs batch files on Windows? You're going to scare many people. So now we have nxt.exe. Nice. And we have, a, we have an icon on the desktop. You click it, and you don't get the black window. <laughs> you know, some people, my mother, if she saw this black window, it wouldn't be an immediate uh, phone call <laughs> to, to me. So yeah. so now now you don't see it. Instead, it instead you get a system a, a, a new NXT icon in your system tray, okay? Mm -hmm. You right-click the icon and you can choose to open the wallet or view the blockchain status or view the log files or shut down the, or shut down the server. Um, I mean, like, uh, like we are all used to from the Windows uh, world. Right, it's very, very friendly. Yeah, so so I would say maybe maybe it's not like it's not going to look like Microsoft Office, okay? But 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 I think it does give us uh, a lot of credibility and legitimacy in the Windows world. And in addition, this installer can also be installed as a jar file on uh, Mac and uh, Linux. If for some reason you don't you, you need the user interface, you can also install it using a console installer. If for some reason you don't like the zip file, um, that's where it goes. Uh, would, would, your... would you consider making it an MSI file? I, I believe MSIs are a lot more trusted. 
no, because MSI um, is the installation tool we are using is Java based. So uh -huh. it, maybe it can generate an MSI. I don't know. I, I don't have. I don't like MSI. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's maybe just me. It's I, slow. I don't they, like they make, a, they, they make a backup of so many things. So everything is so slow. The NXT installer installs 100 megabytes of install of information in less than a minute, and it also delivers the Java JRE. You know, remember the days we had to download the Java JRE? <laughs> <laughs> Now it's installed by the installer. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. automatically, you know, it plugs in everything and you just click nxt.exe and it starts to run and download the blockchain. So, yeah, so ma making it easy was very important. That that's, yeah, I, I agree with you. Mo so most, pe most people can't even, you know, open their email. So making okay. it easier is very important. So it's a very important usability feature, in my view. Um, okay. So um, okay. So let's talk about what else? Um, let's talk about the UI. I, I'm not sure if you looked at the one five UI notes uh, already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am. You realize, you know, how much sleeker and cleaner and nicer it looks. Yes. Right. Okay. So that's because we have a, a now a wizard a web developer, Holger, who put a lot of work into making these things look much better. Right. Um, and uh, you can see um, now when you get new transactions, you'll get notifications. It's a, at the bar at the top. Um, you also have a new, or I'm not sure if it's completely new, uh, the dashboard has been cleaned up and some icons were added. And you also have the My Transactions view, in which you can uh, actually sh look uh, transactions by type. And uh, you can see unconfirmed transactions. You can see all the unconfirmed transactions in the system, not only yours. Um, you, can, you can look up others. Yes, you can see what others are doing. Um, we cleaned, in general, the intention is that unconfirmed transactions will only be visible in the My Transactions table, not, um, not uh, in the individual. For example, in the asset exchange, you'll no longer see unconfirmed transactions. Before that, it popped up and then it disappeared, and you never knew what's really going on. Now, the general UI only shows uh, transactions that are included in the blockchain. Perhaps, uh, perhaps the transaction is phased, then you won't see it. You see only transactions included in the blockchain and executed. That's the only thing you see in the UI except in the My Transactions view, where you can see everything. All unconfirmed and all your phased transactions will be visible there. Okay, nice. for, follow me? All right, so, so hopefully this will make things uh, much easier to understand. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. It's, it, I definitely noticed it's Over time, too, I've noticed you guys have been cleaning it up a lot. Yeah. So uh, and you and you can see that some uh, the blocks views and previous views when are now in the settings uh, menu instead of the, on the dashboard itself instead of o o on the left pane and um, ma many many other you know incremental improvements. Uh, so. There's a, there's a lot of lot of lot of different buttons at the top also. Yeah, uh, we added the sent currency button and, uh, you, and the notifications. Okay, one more very important, uh, maybe even a revolutionary feature is the uh, plugins. Uh, you can now, as a web developer, fairly easily develop a, a plugin for some functionalities that is not included in the default UI. 
I mean, we, we realize that the default UI will never cover every corner case that the, that the blockchain supports, okay, that the server side supports. And hopefully, plugins can provide, you know, can complete this offering, okay? So, um, so we expect third-party developers to develop plugins, and, and, and they are, and they are, yeah, and utilize it. Hopefully, they won't try to utilize it to stu to steal your funds. And probably some of them will try. Um, so, um, but but they can fairly easily access the server-side API and create their own UI. Now, it's, the, the problem with plugins is that they are not uh, decoupled enough from the actual uh, UI code. So they can freely access the UI. Um, so, for example, using plugins and storing your passphrase at the same time, it's not recommended. That's why we also changed the default login so that you only need to log in with your account number, which is uh, safe to uh, to expose unless you're really, really concerned about your anonymity. Um, right, which helps if you have a key, you know, if you accidentally get a key logger on your computer, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to type out your password anymore. Right, you will if you want to execute to submit transactions. You you need to type your your passphrase, but as long as you are in read-only mode, you don't need to, uh, to to type the passphrase. And specifically, I recommend that if you have you're using uh, plugins, especially from someone that you do not trust 100%, simply do not. Um, do not give them your passphrase or do not use your password passphrase while the plugin is enabled if you have a lot of uh, NXT or assets in, in this account. Okay, so, so use it with caution. I, I, I hope that over time we can find ways to isolate the plugins to some kind of sandbox. But right now the, the, the client-side technology is not completely ready for something like this. You, you, you ever you ever uh, think of having like uh, some type of directory of plugins and you know people right through the wallet could install the plugin straight from the directory? Of course. Yeah, I I, I know that there is uh, Tush Tush is working on this. So, oh, nice. Um, I think it's something like NXT plugin dot something. You you can find it. Okay. Um, okay, so, so that's plugins. Um, I also, um, may, maybe that's a good time for questions if we still have someone listening. Um, so, oh, yeah, uh, so, you, so you, you're done covering. Uh, so, yes, th those are all the new features yeah. for 1.59. Uh, you know the transactions. There's the little hammer at the top. You could see all the transactions now with the hammer. It's a lot cleaner. The hammer is the phased transactions. Ah, the hammer. Yeah, the hammer shows you the phased. To the right, you see notifications about new transactions. Right. I, I think it's incoming, incoming, and outgoing. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember very hard what it. Each one of these uh, means, but yeah, I'm sure you can figure out. Maybe we need, um, uh, you know, a balloon over there. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, well, it may, maybe uh, a little no, word that says in and another one that says out underneath it, so people know uh, what, exactly what it is. Yeah. We need a tooltip for those. For, for sure. Um, okay. Um, one more thing, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, roadmap of what's next. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, unless you have other questions. Oh, if, if, if anybody has questions, please uh, just type it in the Supernet Slack, in the channel Supernet Radio. Uh, you could call in, my Skype is Lutz, Lutz, L-O-O-T-Z, L-O-O-T-Z. 
you would call us in uh, and uh, ask him the questions yourself. And uh, if yeah. yeah, if people are completely overwhelmed, then I, I understand. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you know, there's it's it is a very technical subject. Yeah. Um, you know, most people, you know, it, it's a little difficult for people to accommodate. You know, coming on at a certain time to listen to the show. Yeah. So yeah. most people listen to the replays, and I right. find you know, like 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 Fibercoin, you know, it, it at first live they they had like twenty thirty listeners, and now. And now they have over twelve thousand listens, you know. So pe people listen to the replay a lot more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. So, so let's talk about uh, roadmap. Yeah. Uh, what, what's coming? What's coming? What's new? What's coming? Yep. So, um, one feature that's definitely coming is what we call account control. What account control does it? helps you restrict what your account can do um, in the sense that you can um, disable certain transaction types from accounts or provide a white list of recipients that, uh, that your account can only uh, use them as recipients of transactions and not execute anything that does not require a recipient. Um, another uh, important feature of account control is to uh, allow you to only execute phase transactions and only provide specific criteria for their approval. This is a, this is kind of specific use case for I'm not sure we should get into this. Maybe for it's going to be used for crowdfunding. The account control is definitely coming up in version 1.6. I'm not exactly sure which sub features will make it in and which which not. Um, another feature that is already waiting a lot of time to get included. Hopefully. It Maybe it will get into 1.6, maybe it will have to wait for 1.7, is uh, what we call coin shuffling, um, which is um, our, the, our version, our NXT version to coin join. Um, the, it's an anonymity feature that you can take several accounts, um, decide about uh, the amount of NXT or currency that they would like to shuffle they all send it into the shuffler and they get back the same amounts but in a way that it's impossible to trace who transferred the funds to who so 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 you specify let's say 10 accounts of 10 uh, 10 different users all specify their uh, origin account and their destination account. After shuffling is done, fonts are transferred in some way or the other between the 10 input accounts and 10 output accounts, but the sequencing is completely random. So you cannot say that Lutz moves these fonts to this account and Lior moved it to an, from this to this. It's, the, the mapping is lost, okay? So I, I believe most anonymity features are based on something like this. So this is basically an implementation of a protocol developed by the academic in the academic circles. Lutz. Um. 